But first, those headlines today screaming about a 19% gender pay gap. Well, they're not what they seem. Hearing that on average, women earn 19% less than men, seems to confirm the leftist prejudice about a society riddled with unfair discrimination. But as always with statistics, the devil's in the detail. And these statistics are not comparing apples with apples across a profession, let's say. It's about pay within a company. Now, let me explain. The data out today comes from the federal government's Workplace Gender Equality Agency. And under new laws, every company with more than 100 employees across Australia must now report their HR information to the agency. And then about this time each year, it's all published. The median pay of the man and the median pay of women in the company and any resultant pay gap company by company. So let's use BHP as an example. We get the median pay today for all male BHP employees. Then we get the median pay for all the women. And the difference between the men and the women is BHP's pay gap. Now, it doesn't matter if you're comparing a male senior executive with a female receptionist or a female accountant with a male cleaner. It's not about the job done by the employee and what it pays, but what people are paid by their gender. So you can see it's a pretty blunt measure. But that didn't stop the government today, leaving the impression that somehow women in Australia are paid less than men simply on account of our gender. This is added to the support we have for feminised industries. But those opposite, of course, don't even support that. And you'll, you'll always have people on this side know that releasing that sort of data is effective. You will only find on the other side of politics anyone arguing that it's useless. The days of secretly paying women less than men are now over. We have a group opposite that has no intention of closing the gender pay gap, which explains why they Order. have opposed Order. each the of the laws we the brought into closing. Now, despite what that minister said, let's not forget it's long been illegal in this country to pay men and women differently to do the same work. Indeed, Tony Burke, it's been outlawed since 1969. Now, typically, the media reporting of these results today said things like female workers will now learn for the first time how much less they are paid when compared to their male colleagues. Thanks, of course, to the publication of these statistics. Again, that's not right. Same job, same pay, that's the law. Instead, what these figures show is that the jobs men do and the professions men choose or predominate in tend to be better paid. Now, that could be because, as the figures indicate today, more women than men work part-time and therefore get paid less, even though they both get the same hourly rate. Or it can be that the type of industries that men predominate in compared to women, engineering, let's say, compared to childcare, explain the pay disparity. The health sector, that's a good example. Nurses, according to the data, are around 90% female. And nurses simply don't earn as much as doc doctors, and doctors are around 60% male. So in a straight analysis like that, women earn less than men when you compare nurses with doctors. But that's like comparing apples and oranges. If we compare a female nurse, let's say, with a female doctor, we still have a pay gap. It's not a gendered pay gap, but we still have a pay gap because the two jobs are very different. And lest anyone scream about unfair payment rates for female-dominated occupations, I reckon it's right that doctors earn more than nurses because it takes a lot longer to become a doctor than a nurse and, in many cases, more intellectual heft to qualify. Now, that's not a gendered statement. After all, there's plenty of female doctors now, around 40% in Australia. Staying with the medical profession, here's another example. Even amongst doctors, there's differences. GPs, for example, they often work part-time and consequently earn less than, say, a full-time surgeon. Well, fair enough, you say. One's part-time, one isn't, one requires higher qualifications, the other one doesn't. But that can often mean we get a statistic that says female doctors earn less than the male counterparts if she's a part-time GP and he's a full-time surgeon.
See how the data can be misleading? Now, as far as I'm concerned, people who work longer hours or do more demanding jobs, well, they should have the right to be paid more based not on their gender, but on the sort of work they do. Qantas, for instance, today, it's reported as having a pay gap of nearly 40%. But the airline, which incidentally has got a female chief executive, makes a point through its head of HR, who also is female, that women are not paid less at Qantas to do the same job as men. It's just that there's a significant underrepresentation of women in highly paid roles like pilots and engineers across the airline. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that pilots should be paid more than cabin staff because it's a more demanding job. Our lives are literally in their hands, not just our lunch. And I want pilots employed on the basis of confidence, not some sort of gender quota. Naturally, Qantas has got out the media today and said that they are working hard to encourage more women into pilot and engineering roles. But the idea that any differences in gender representation is somehow due to discrimination or cultural conditioning, well, that's just wrong. Interestingly, have a look at this report about the gender pay gap in the media. The headline on Crikey reads that Sky News Australia is the only major media company in the country without a gender pay gap. It goes on. Rupert Murdoch's Sky News is the only major media organisation in Australia where women don't earn less than men, it says, according to new workplace gender equity data. Indeed, as the published table reports, the pay gap, men paid more than women, well, at nine media, that's 10% men's favour. It's almost 14% at seven media. They don't report the salaries at the ABC for some reason, but at Sky News, it's negative 1% meaning it's the men who have the pay gap here at Sky News, not the women, albeit it's a pretty small one. Today in the Parliament, all the usual suspects were huffing and puffing about the, the unfairness in these statistics, including the Teals and the Green Labor left. But I tell you, I find it bizarre to have spent a whole day watching the left convulse about gender pay gaps and what women do and don't earn, when this is the same leftist mob can't even decide what a woman is anymore. I mean, if anyone can be a woman these days, if anyone can wake up today and decide they're Jane, not John, or John, not Jane, and change their pronouns, how relevant are these statistics anyway? If women really are being paid differently for the same work, fair enough. Get fired up because that's illegal. But to my mind, it's the cancelling of women, the, the theft of our women-only sports and spaces, change rooms, toilets, our language too, breastfeeding, not chestfeeding, or chestfeeding, not breastfeeding, reducing us to simply a person with a uterus, not a woman. Well, to me, that's the real discrimination we face today, not flawed statistics about gender pay that any competent statistician can drive a truck through. I mean, look at Sky, higher on merit, and you know what? It might just work itself out.